Well, good evening. Uh, the Refine team didn't want COVID-19 to get in the way of what we would normally do at Refined. So we thought we would use the wonders of technology to produce the first ever Refined online. Uh, and so I'm sure many of you have been watching uh, hundreds of episodes on your fave box sets. And you'll know that as you've been doing that, that there's often the first one, the pilot episode, which is like a test to see whether people will continue to watch that series. And so that's kind of what this video is. Um, it's like a pilot, if you like, to see whether you guys would want to continue to see videos like this. And if you would, please like this and write a little comment in the box below. And as always, one of the most important things we like to do at Refine is to listen to what God has to say to us through his word. And so that's what we're going to spend some time doing in each of the videos. You're going to hear a short talk from the Bible and then you're going to have a chance to respond in prayer. So you're going to need to have your Bibles ready. There'll also be uh, different sections in the video where there'll be games to play and there'll be some refined challenges. So look out for them. So let's get started, shall we? Enjoy. So the first thing we're going to do is play a little game. We love to play games at the start. So here's the game. Uh, it's uh, rock, paper, scissors. It's you guys versus me. I'm going to do a, a, a various supply of rock, paper, scissors. You do it at the same time as me. And I want you to count how many times you beat me and post it in the comments box below to let me know. Let's see if any of you can beat me in every single one. Are you ready? One, two, three. Did anyone win? Okay, count that. Ready, number two. One, two, three. Okay, next one. One, two, three. Uh, okay, how do you get on with that one? Anyone got three out of three? Let's keep going. One, two, three. Paper. And last two. One, two, three. Scissors. Final one. One, two, three. Scissors again. He went paper. Good. Okay, write in the comment box below. Did anyone get every single one? Well, uh, we're going to spend some time now looking at uh, John's Gospel, and uh, we're going to need a, you need a Bible for this. So I'm going to give you about uh, 20, 30 seconds to get yourself a Bible. Just what I um, find John's Gospel in my Bible, uh, chapter 20, verse 30 and 31. Go, go get yourself a Bible. Okay, all sorted. Okay, so uh, let me pray and then we'll get looking at John's gospel. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you that we can um, come together and hear what you have to say to us. And Father, we pray that you would help us to listen well and that we would learn wonderful things about the good news of the Lord Jesus. And we ask this in his name. Amen. Cool. Okay, so I want to ask you a question. I wonder how you would describe the best life. How, how would you describe the best life? Um, maybe uh, school life, not being at school is the best life. Or maybe that's what you thought would be the best life. But I'm sure that you're noticing at the moment that actually, no, life's not quite as good as you thought it was going to be not being at school all the time. And maybe even the thought that uh, maybe actually I wouldn't mind going back to school. No? I reckon some of that's true for some of you. Or maybe actually life is just so hard at the moment. And actually right now you wouldn't use the phrase the best life because it's just tough. It's not where you're at right now. Uh, there was this song that came out recently um, and it helps it helps really sum up, I think, how your generation specifically, but other generations feel about life at the moment. OK, it's, it's, a, it's a song called Shallow. Uh, it's written by and sung by Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper. Uh, and so I want to just um, sing the lyrics. I know, I know, sorry. I'm going to sing them because it's really hard to read them. Uh, and they describe 
what the best life looks like and actually how they haven't actually found the best life. Does that make sense? So let me let me give it a go. Bear with me. Tell me something, girl. Are you happy in this modern world? Or do you need more? Is there something else you're searching for? I'm falling. In all the good times I find myself longing for change. And in the bad times I fear myself. And then the girl comes in, she starts singing, and she's saying basically the same stuff, okay? She goes, tell me something, boy. Aren't you tired trying to fill that void? Or do you need more? Ain't it hard keeping it so hardcore? I'm falling. In all the good times I find myself longing. For change, and in the bad times, I fear myself. Okay, I finished. Okay, you okay, guys? Yeah. So, did you notice in those those lyrics that they're, these these people are constantly searching? They're longing for change, trying to fill the void, trying to find answers, seeking desperately, and failing constantly to have the best life. But John has the answer. He has the only solution. You see, in John chapter 20, verses 30 to 31, he tells us why he wrote his gospel. Uh, Let me read it to you. Uh, Get get your Bibles. Uh, John chapter 20, verse 30 and 31. He says this. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. That you might have life in his name. You see, the life that he's talking about here is is the best life. In John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus says, I have come to give them life and they may have it to the full. In other words, Jesus and John are both telling us that we can have the best life, life to the full. The words of the song Shallow don't need to be the theme tune of our lives. Now, maybe you're sitting there and you're struggling to believe that that's true. Well, just think of John for for a second, okay? He is speaking from experience. John, who knew Jesus perfectly, he was the one uh, who, who hung around with Jesus. He was one of his disciples. He spent three years with him. Now, he'd seen Jesus do some amazing miracles. He'd seen it with his own eyes. He had heard the life changing words of Jesus. He had experienced for himself what it meant to have the best life. Life to the full. Life in Jesus' name. And so John writes it all down so that we can experience and we can have what he had. An incredible life knowing God. An everlasting, eternal life to look forward to. Now, what I want you to do, okay, just based on what you've just heard and read in those verses, I want you to write a hashtag. Hashtag challenge, remember that? You've got 30 seconds to write a hashtag and I want you to put it in the comments box below the video, okay? Hashtag, 30 seconds. Let me just get a timer. Hang on, give me a second. Be thinking as I'm doing it. What would you write to summarise what you've learned so far? Here we go. Here comes a 30 second timer. Awesome. Okay, have you got some written down? Yes? Okay, start posting them. Post it. Now. Good. Let me have a look. Great. Okay, well, see, I think John tells us a few things in these verses, okay, 
about how to have the best life, the life that Jesus offers. OK, so firstly, uh, he says that we need to read his words because it's everything that we need to know. L let's read them again. Get your Bibles over, open again. Let me read them again. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. See, uh, Jesus saw his disciples and he, and he showed them loads and loads of signs while, he, while, while they were with him. OK, and John wants us to meet the real Jesus, the one that he saw and spent time with so that we can discover who he is and what his mission was. And so John carefully selects certain miracles and certain events to show us the truth about Jesus. They're like signposts kind of pointing to Jesus. This is him. This is it. And then he writes them all down so that we can read them. And what he has written is not everything Jesus did, but everything that we need to know to believe. Now, now John's gospel, OK, isn't going to answer every question. All right. I have loads of questions that John's gospel won't answer. OK, so here's a question. Why did God create wasps? Yeah, I asked that question. Why did God create wasps? I mean, bees, I understand bees because, well, they make honey and they pollinate flowers. But wasps, they seem to be angry all the time and they just want to sting us. True. Uh, what about heaven? Uh, will there be a McDonald's and a KFC in heaven? No, I don't. John's gospel doesn't answer those questions. In fact, the Bible doesn't answer those questions. But and they're actually they're silly questions. But we will have more serious questions that we want to answer. Like, God, what are you doing with this coronavirus? But John reminds us that answering these questions is not the most important thing. There is one question that John wants us to help us to answer, and it's this. Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? Now, I wonder how how you would answer that question. Just think for a moment. How would you hashtag that question and answer it? You see, John has given us everything we need to know to answer that question. Now, have a look at verse 31 again. Let me read it. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. You see, as we read through John's gospel, he has given, given us everything we need to know to believe that Jesus is the Messiah and that he's the Son of God. And as we read through all 21 chapters of John's gospel, we will see that Jesus really is the chosen Messiah who came to save sinners like, like me and like you, and by dying on the cross and, and rising from the dead, he defeated sin, uh, death and defeated sin so that we can truly, fully, completely believe that he really is who he says he is. Now, I know that some of you are refined. There are some of you who just don't believe or, or you have doubts and you're just not sure that it's all really true. And I hope as we go through John's gospel, it will help you to believe that he really is who he says he is and that you can have the best life possible, a life that Jesus promises. And for those of you who already uh, believe that Jesus is who he says he is, I hope that you will rediscover more of who Jesus is and, and then you'll understand what it means to, to have the best life and to live it for Jesus. Sounds good, doesn't it? Well, that's what we're going to do over the next couple of weeks. So to finish, here's what I want you to do. I want you to hashtag challenge again. Think about all the things we've just talked about and thought about. And I want you to write down the best hashtag you can come up with for all that we've learned now. OK, I'm going to get the timer ready. So that's just enough time to start thinking. And then we're going to start it. Get ready. I know it's feeling the pressure, isn't it? OK, you ready? Here we go. 30 seconds. No, that's not it. That's an advert. What the heck is going on with YouTube right now? No, stop. Yes. Here we go. Go, go, go.
Okay, guys, stop right in. Okay, it's your last chance. Send that to me. Send that to me and in the comments box, I wanna see him, okay? Do it now, now, down there. Brilliant, any more? Come on, yes, okay, good. Right, that's great, guys. I'm gonna pray and then we're gonna move on to something else on the video. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for John. We thank you for all the things that he wrote down. Father, we thank you that we can have, you promise us life and life to the full, the best life, if we believe that Jesus is the, the Messiah, the Son of God. And Father, as we read through John's gospel, would you help us to believe? Father, help us to, to realise that this is everything we need to know, to work out who Jesus is and to believe he, said, he is exactly who he says he is. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Great, well done guys. Oh, hello, Gerald Humperdinck here. Yes, how are you? I'm the editor of uh, Refined Online and thought I would get involved. Ha, <laughs> spiffing what? <laughs> oh, yes, we like a good challenge. So I thought what we would do is have a segment on the Refined Challenge. We like a good challenge, don't we? And uh, this week's challenge is you have to do as many bottle flips. Yes, bottle flips, because you use or down with the bottle flip. Ha, <laughs> ha. Oh, spiffing. <laughs> and the two challenges that we have for you today, challenge number one is how many bottle flips can you do in 30 seconds? Yes, 30 seconds. And the second challenge we have for you spiffing lot today, you youths, is to do the best bottle flip trick shot. The best that you can do. I've got some of my friends doing some. You'll see them on the videos after. Good job, well done, fam. Well, this is the outro. Um, I see you've you've met the editor. Um, some he's a bit odd, isn't he? Um, some people will tell me that he looks a little bit like me, but I don't I don't see it personally. Anyway, um, if you'd like to send in some videos uh, of, for the the two challenges, the bottle flip challenges, then get some permission from your parents, and then e email me at Gareth dot s k y r m e at lcm.org.uk and I'll choose two of the best videos and I'll include them in next week's video. So there's some things to think about. Well, this is the end of the Refined Online video this week. Uh, so I'm signing off and then until next week, remember, hashtag the best life is with Jesus.